Let's be honest, you probably like the Motorola Photon 4G or the HTC Evo 3D as much as I do, but grandma doesn't need that phone or your mom doesn't need that phone or maybe your teenage daughter. She doesn't need that high-end HD recording, dual-core toting Android smartphone. No, a mid-range device works just fine and T-Mobile has got you hooked up. Here it is, the HTC Wildfire S. Now this was announced at Mobile World Congress earlier in the year and it's a great little mid-range Android device. It's for those people that don't need, you know, the one gigahertz dual core super phone. They just need something with a good OS, something that's reliable, and a smartphone where they can browse the web, check Facebook from time to time, things like that. This fits the bill. It's available now for $79.99 after mail-in rebate with a two-year agreement. It's available in two colors, white and black, and it has a 600 megahertz processor, five megapixel camera, but it does come with Android 2.3. Now, is this the phone to get for grandma or mom, or should you go with a basic phone, maybe a feature phone, or get something on sale like the Evo 4G? We'll find that out in the full review, but first, gotta give some love to my boys at Best Buy, because they hook us up with a lot of cool phones for use on One Paw Bandit Game. When you go in to get this at Best Buy, you're gonna walk out working. They're gonna help you set up your email, your web, all that good stuff, so when you walk out, your daughter, whoever gets this phone, mom, grandma, she's gonna have Facebook access, if that's her thing. Much more coverage coming on it, let's check it out. Since this is running HTC Sense, and like I said, it's running version 2.1, let's take a look at the differences, because you know, if you're coming from another Android platform, let's say TouchWiz, uh, any of them, stock Android, anything like that, it's a little bit different across the board. And that goes to show you how different how things can be different with the manufacturer installed overlay. So you can see, for example, the phone app, and if you've seen you know, HTC stuff, uh, just forgive me here, because I'd like to show this off to people that are new to Sense UI, but you can see the phone app here, and of course you can get rid of the, uh, the di uh, digits, if you will, by going, uh, clicking that button. So you can see that there, and then when you get rid of those, you can see your full contacts list. Obviously you don't have very many because it's a test account, but that is actually one thing that kind of uh, I don't care for about the HTC uh, Sense UI platform is when you're in here like this, you have, you know, of course your missed calls will show up, but they kind of conglomerate in with your, your contacts. So you'll have two or three missed calls, you'll have, you know, two or three accepted calls, and then you have your contacts. So it's just this big slew of numbers across the, uh, across the page. And because this is a smaller display, 3.2 inches as opposed to, you know, something like 4 or 4.3 inches. It's not as noticeable when they scroll down, but still kind of kind of irritating here to have all these numbers here as opposed to just a clean, you know, something like perhaps what Motorola does, with Motorola's applications platform where it's just a clean look. You can see there uh, on that build of Android because both of these are running gingerbread, so you can see how different it can be just depending on the software platform that it's running or the user interface that it's running. But you see the sense elements everywhere. You can see it in the contacts list. Uh, as well. So we can go into contacts and you can see here complete HTC uh, influence and let's go into Billy Bob for example so you can see there and of course it shows and it, it's organized don't get me wrong I actually like HTC's contacts list quite a bit because I can go in here with Billy Bob and I can scroll across and see when I last text message Billy Bob when I mailed him uh, when I did updates and events gallery and call history so I can come over here to call history and say we talked last Tuesday and I can come over here to messages, and the last message we sent was you know, Thursday at four o'clock. And then I can compose, and when I click compose, it automatically fills in his number, and then I can add the text from there. So it kicks me right over into the text messaging interface. So that's pretty cool. I like the organization there. And of course, your home, your messages, and you have your options of you know, turning the ringtone off, you can block the caller, you can edit contact, add addresses, things like that. So it's organized, they've done a really good job with it. So we're going to edit contact, for example. And, uh, Get rid of the keyboard so there's a little more screen space here. You can add birthdays, you can add your instant messenger, postal address, anniversary, things like that. Kids' birthdays, other, you know, put other in there. Notes, nicknames, websites. So you've got quite a bit of uh, contact information that you can fill in. That's something that HTC does well. So kudos to them on the contacts front. It's really an organized approach. They've really grown a lot as opposed to where they were, let's say, with the Hero and with the, Mo you know, back to those days, the HTC Hero. Uh, on Sprint, Sense has really come a long way with Sense 2.1 and Sense 3.0 with all the customization options and things like that. Now this one doesn't have the most up-to-date Android market. You can see that the Android market has changed. In a couple of days it'll be getting the new Android market which looks a lot, or actually looks just like this. And I hate, again, to bring in another device. But that's where the Android market is going. Here's the old version, here's the new version. So you can see the difference, just where it's sorting by apps, games, books, and movies. So that'll come soon to this device there in a phased rollout. Uh, so because this is a newer device, I'm, I'm assuming it's one of the ones that's set uh, to last, so or you know close to last. So that will be uh, will be coming shortly. Let's take a look at the camera. Five megapixel camera has a flash 
And uh, you know, it's not gonna win you over, it's not gonna replace your point and shoot camera by any means, but it's good for daytime shots and the flash does a pretty decent job. So I'll bring over my uh, Bluetooth keyboard here, for example, so we can get an up close view of the keys and it does have autofocus, but it doesn't have a physical camera button. So you have to come in here and autofocus by pressing the button and it's ready. So you can see, you know, for five megapixel camera, it certainly does a good job. It's not gonna beat the industry leaders, the iPhone 4, the uh, any of the HTC 8 megapixel devices, the N8, uh, my Touch 4G slide, which has a fantastic eight megapixel camera, but it's gonna do you fine when you're in a well-lit situation like this with a light shining or outside, get into low-lit situations, it's gonna be a little bit grainy. So you can see over here, um, you know, you have your editing options, you have flash, and I can, of course, expand that out and see self-timers, image adjustments, I can change the white balance, the resolution, uh, ISO, things like that. So quite a few options there, and like I said, certainly not a bad camera for a, uh, a mid-range device. And then you have the camcorder as well, and we'll go in here so you can see the video quality. You do not have HD video quality on this device. The highest it goes is 640 by 480. So keep that in mind, no HD video recording. If that's something that's important to you, then you'll need to uh, upgrade perhaps to the G2X, the Sensation, if you're uh, on T-Mobile. So that's something to keep in mind. Let's take a look at Quadrant Standard, which I just downloaded. And keep in mind with any of these network tests, take them with a grain of salt because you know, it doesn't really uh, relay day-to-day -day performance. Day-to-day -day performance on this thing has been just fine, but because it does have a slower processor, I imagine Quadrant Standard uh, isn't gonna come out as well, but still we'll, uh, we'll give it a go. Now one thing I will say about this, both call quality and battery life have been surprisingly decent. Uh, I've been giving HTC a hard time recently with the Sensation and with the uh, more so with the Evo 3D, but with the Sensation as well, I feel like the wireless radio isn't quite up to par. I hold it up against something like the Photon or on T-Mobile, something like the G2X, and the wireless radios seem to be a little bit stronger on the competing devices. This one's been pretty decent. I've had a pretty decent signal. 3G's been very consistent. Uh, the network has done a good job. When I took it to a dead spot, it was a little choppy, but it held the call. And then you have a 1,230 milliamp hour battery. Not so good in the Inspire 4G because of the big display. Works just fine in this one because of the smaller display and the, uh, the lower uh, processor speed. So it's worked pretty well at moderate use. You should be able to make it through a day on a single charge. I'd say, you know, if you're a heavy user, carry around a car charger just in case, but something to keep in mind. So we're loading it up here and then we'll see the benchmark results and we'll bring it up. And because it's running gingerbread, it's giving me a hard time. So the Quadrant Standard score is 735. So it's not gonna beat your Nexus One, it's not gonna beat the Galaxy S2, the Atrix 4G, any of these high-end devices on the market. But 735, pretty decent for a mid-range device. And like I said, take these with a grain of salt because it's not indicative of day-to-day -day performance. I've had no lag, no real slowdowns with the exception of things like hardcore web browsing or you know, playing games or anything that's graphically intensive. So keep that in mind, you know, you're gonna be fine with day-to-day -day text messaging, calling, things like that. Let's take a look at speed test because I want to give uh, put T-Mobile's network to the test here and see what we can get. It has uh, three bars of service right now, so we'll see what speed test pulls up for us, and we'll load this up. And I just realized I forgot to change it to uh, megabits per second, so we'll have to do some rough converting. As you can see here, ping's loading up right now, so we'll see where we're at. Looks to be about, okay, we're going to go up a little bit. I was hoping we'd shoot for one, yeah, about 1,100... Uh, kilobits per second, so about one megabit per second. And it keeps, keeps going, keeps going. So we're looking at about two megabits per second there uh, on the download and then on the upload. Let's see here. Eh, let's just say about 300. Nope, going up a little bit, 330. I'm gonna call it 380. Oh, it's close, 377. So, you know, converting these over roughly about two megabits per second on the download, about 0.35 megabits per second. Uh, on the upload. So something to keep in mind, you know, these, this obviously isn't gonna compete with the HSPA Plus devices on T-Mobile, but it's a pretty decent speed for mid-range HSPA device uh, on, the, on the carrier. So again, you know, you're not gonna see seven megabits per second at any point, but still, two megabits per second, that competes pretty directly with Verizon's 3G EVDO Revision A, and it's a little bit faster actually in most testing, and competes head-to-head -head with AT&T's uh, 3G, well, and their HSPA Plus, honestly, because you know, in the Charlotte area, I haven't seen speeds on AT&T much higher than about 3.5 megabits per second. So again, you know, competes with a lot of the carriers, even though it doesn't have HSPA Plus uh, out of the box, or it doesn't have HSPA Plus, period. So something to keep in mind. So all in all, you know, very good device. It's a welcome addition to T-Mobile's lineup. It's something I would recommend, particularly to those people that are like, you know, my daughter's going back to school, she's turning 16, needs a cell phone, don't want to spend an arm and a leg, 
this is gonna be your device. This is gonna be a decent back to school device or perhaps for mom or perhaps for grandma. Somebody that's new to the smartphone world wants to sink their teeth in it, but they don't wanna spend, you know, put a significant investment in it. $300 is quite a bit of money uh, in a lot of uh, instances. So something to keep in mind, it's a good device. I would, I would recommend it and for what it is, it's a, uh, it performs pretty well. Much more coverage to come on PhoneDog.com with the HTC Wildfire S, so keep it locked on the site. We'll have some dog fights with this as well since we're you know, kind of nearing the back to school time, so keep an eye out for those and be sure to like us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash PhoneDog. We're doing the greatest tech giveaway ever, so if you enter to win, you have an opportunity to win an Apple iPad 2, Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1, HP Touchpad, or Asus Transformer. Pretty cool contest. Register to win at uh, facebook.com slash phone dog. All you have to do is like us and some of our uh, network sites as well. And be sure to follow me on Twitter, phone dog underscore Aaron. Let me know if you have any questions, thoughts about this device, or you just want to say hello. Pretty friendly guy. I'd love to uh, love to chat with you. Phone dog underscore Aaron and on Facebook at facebook.com slash phone dog AB. Thanks so much for watching. Keep it locked on the site. More coverage to come with this bad boy. We'll see you next time.